Hello, it's Sasa, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make this t um, hand block the top. It's called the Gigori, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, the jacket. And um, so I already made a separate video to make the Chima skirt. The skirt is really easy. This jacket is not that difficult. Once you have the correct pattern, then you can make it. So like, you have the sleeves, the jacket. Depending on the time period that you're making for, the lengths vary for the jacket. But this is for more like towards the end of the Joseon period where that it came like really, really short. So this is like this. The sleeves. This is all cut in one piece. Like there's no seam here. No, there isn't. And then you can choose any like a contrast color for like the band. The styles that you can choose is like limitless. There's so many things you can do. And okay, and then I put there's like this the center spack seam, I put like a the white trim. Like this. This bow is actually pre-made, so that you it's already like it's just the fabric uh, I took on fabric, you fold this in half. Then you get another piece of fabric to go over top and then this is just sewn on so you don't have to worry about figuring out how to tie the knot like this knot will look perfect all the time and here is i've got snaps here so it's also like really there's because i know the traditional ones they have like the ties inside and the ties on the outside but just for making more easier to use uh easier to wear so this piece is the uh, this is the the right arm. There's a different seam. This is what the fabric looks like because you don't want there to be a seam on the top, nor to be a seam here. So that's why this is cut like this. This is this uh, the right arm. So what will happen is this will fold. And see, look, this is the jacket, and this is the front on this side. See here, I've already cut and I've added on the little sleeve uh, trim band. The next part now, what we're gonna do the right sides together sew down here the sleeve and this little part right there okay and here's the other arm okay at the back you want there to be like a little trim so you take a piece of the fabric and you just iron it like this you're gonna pin it to the right side with the uh, the nice edge sticking out first you're gonna base this then we're gonna sew this to the other side so then when you have it you'll have a little bit of like the white line sticking out for this is the center back. For the collar, so you have one of the fabric and then you want a piece of interfacing to make it stiff. First what you're going to do is base these together. Then you're going to iron this in half and you really want to have this nice um, thick crease. We're going to get a piece of ribbon here and you're also going to iron this not in half but a little bit less than that. We're going to first sew on the ribbon first and then we'll close this off and then we can attach it to the main ribbon. You see it's not completely folded in half, it's just a little bit, okay? You can fold it in half if your ribbon is wider, so then you can be in half, really no difference, okay? So the end bit, you want it to be on the right side when you look at it, it has to have a slant like this. So first what you do, see you f fold off the end, then you fold it triangular, and then you squash this down again. So then it's like this. So we have this piece. Now we've already ironed this. So look, now we can see where the where the crease is. And we know where this crease is. I'm gonna lay this on top so that the, the creases are the same. So it's like this. We're gonna sew on top of the white, up and around. Okay? Um, you have to iron this part first because if you don't it's hard to because the material gets really thick and you have to like really steam in and depending on your material you can't use steam and you won't be able to get the nice crisp that's why we have to do it separately and then put it on top after you've sewn the white strip on you want to fold this in half again press it again and then base this down and then you just want to finish up this edge so just like that so here this is for the collar this part will be took a bit more skills so you're supposed to pin this down and slowly go all the way around. We're going to sew the collar on first, then we can start with the lining. You make the exact same thing for the lining, except for you, you when you cut it, you cut it with the length of the extra cuff as well. Okay, so uh, sew the same, but in the sleeve, leave an opening here. That way, so that when you'll be able to sew it, you'll be, you won't have to do any slip stitching or hand stitching for the lining because you have this hole here, then you'll be able to, to um, do everything by machine. 
Okay, so now I've finished sewed on the collar. So it's like this. Like this. So you're gonna take the lining, we're gonna uh, pin it up here. We're gonna do the, the neck part first, then we close off the bottom, then we flip it inside out, and then the last step is we do the sleeves. Finish it off. So after you've done all the lining, so first, like I said, you sew this part first, then you shove the sleeves within, you sew the bottom edge. Then you do the sleeves, right? And that's why you have that opening in the sleeve to be able to um, turn things inside out because then afterwards, then you'll have, look, um, there's a stitching here. So that way you don't have to do any hand sewing and there won't be any like hand sewing along here and this will be a nice finish. And this is the industrial technique of what they do. They don't teach you it in the patterns, but I learned this in a class. And any, any, any jacket like you bought in the store that has lining, go check. Take, your, take the sleeve lining out and you'll see that there's a stitching there. That's where the hole that they had. Okay, so now you want to try it on. And um, I have, you put snaps here. This is for easy wear. So you want to make it like, see how this is this little cut down here. So when this overlaps, you want it to be like a straight line point and it's up. If it's like missed a line like this or if it's too much. So this is what you're aiming for. Okay, and this this tie, I made it, it's like pre-made, so look, it's like attached and it's already made, you don't have to worry about anything. To make it, it's just a long sash, so you cut along, it's, uh, I did four and a half inches by around like a total of 80 inches long. And um, you can, don't have to cut it the full 80 inches if your fabric, you don't want to waste them, because there's a join right here, but this, but this seam here is hidden, because you fold it right here, so no one's going to see that. So they, right, so you sew it, flip it inside out, iron it, and this is flat. Right here, this is just a separate tube. So this long piece, just one long piece, like this, and you just fold it in half, right? So now it sticks like this. This piece right here is another separate piece that goes like over top. So it's completely separate, two pieces. So this wraps around here, okay? And this part, you have to hand sew it on. See, look, I hand sewed. You have no choice but to do that. Um, there's also you can do another one. This is another one I made. It's for another one. Uh, see, look like this, and then this part. Some parts you can do by machine, but when you're attaching the main thing to the um, the top, you have to do it by hand. And you can also add. See, look, this one has another color. So this is those two long straps plus one in the center. So this way it looks. Like Here's a finished jacket. Looks just this. I like this one because it's more like a royal princess. Material uh, style because like, there's the gold embroidery. It cuffs like this. Here you can see the bow better. And the back. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.